Since the dawn of time, humans have been creating art to depict how they see and feel about the world. But throughout history, art has been used to depict an act that some might not consider to be quite so beautiful. War. You know, we painted in caves, and then we went out and beat each other with clubs. But just as warfare has advanced beyond pounding each other with stumps of wood, art has also evolved. Photographers are on the front line with the newest technologies to bring the American public into the war zone a place known very well by Air Force Staff Sergeant Ed Drew, a combat search and rescue helicopter gunner who recently returned from a deployment to Afghanistan, and an artist who doesn't always use the newest technologies. The thing about Staff Sergeant Drew's photos is that they aren't like any you've probably seen from this war, or any war in the last 150 years, really. I thought like, okay, well, I want to do this project on, on the guys who I work with, and I think the best way to show their humanity, to show the beauty of a human is through tintype. So I never heard of it being done in a war since the Civil War. This would be a great project. Tintype is a method of photography popular during the Civil War, where instead of being printed on paper, the image is processed on a metal surface. To do tintype, the photographer takes a metal plate covered with an emulsion called collodion and dips it in silver nitrate. He then has to slide it behind the camera and take the picture before the plate dries, which could prove kind of difficult in certain climates. Zero percent humidity in Afghanistan translates to my emulsion was drying as I was pouring it onto the plate. A lot of people think, uh, oh yeah, you know, you're using Civil War. No, I was not using a Civil War. This wasn't a period piece. This was about making tin types. I used a speed graphic from 1930, which is a, a 4x5 press camera, and an Aero XR uh, aerial photo lens that had a special adapter that was made to fit onto this camera. And unlike lots of modern cameras, it isn't exactly point and shoot either. The subject is required to sit completely still for several seconds in order to get the proper exposure. Most of them were six second exposures, so you're having to stay perfectly still for six seconds with dust blowing in your face and everything, and, and that was, for them it was hard. This is uh, one of the pilots. He's like, oh dude, can you, can you do this pose like Black Hawk Down? And I'm like, yeah, sure. In, in tintypes, it's a negative. It's never a positive. So. Um, he was actually looking this way, but it flipped it. And, and that's why, you know, if you look at Black Hawk Down, the guy's looking the opposite direction. Well, you know, in real life, and I kept on forgetting that. After taking the picture, Staff Sergeant Drew would run the plate to a makeshift dark room, which was basically a pelican case with a blackout curtain draped over top. He had to wash the emulsion off the plate and then fix the image. But elements found in ordinary bottled water would have an adverse reaction to chemicals in the plate. I would distill seven bottles of water every morning for the next day's photos. This is my pilot. Disclaimer is his flag is on wrong. And that's because we came back from a mission and he threw his patches on in a rush. And so many uh, military people were like, oh, his flag's on wrong. And, Blah, 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 and it's like, you know, I wasn't doing this for the Air Force, so I was kind of focused on like getting the process correct and not, uh, <laughs> not, I mean, there's a million steps and it takes 40 minutes, and the last thing I'm thinking about is the flag on, right? So unfortunately, um, this kind of fell on the wayside, but it's a brilliant image. But why go through so much trouble just to take a photo? In an age where digital cameras and smartphones can be found anywhere and everywhere, what really inspired Sergeant Drew to create this art? My son is born and suddenly I am scared of dying. I've got this, this little wonderful child and, and you know my 11 year old he knows his father he knows who I am so it's in my mind it's okay for me to depart this world if, if, if in combat it happens but, but this little guy I've got to be around for him. Then those plates became about a, a physical record of my passage in this world for my son. Who is Sam gonna know? When, when his father doesn't come home. Maybe he'll know the people that his father was with last. Because everybody talks about how bad they feel for the family, and indeed that's a horrible thing, but uh, your fellow soldiers are the first people to see you die. Sometimes they witness your death right in front of them. Then I've got uh, one of our gunners. He's got this wonderful tattoo on his back. I, it brought us closer. I feel like we're, we're closer. Maybe he would probably laugh or something or say, dude, but he's so happy that uh, I've gotten such good attention from this. Sometimes I'd be called on a mission because I was on duty 
and I would have to drop what I was doing no matter what I was doing. It was in the middle of making the photo and I literally had to sprint, just drop the whole artistic thought and start thinking tactical and, and who's in the zone and who's wounded. I got five radios blaring off in my head and I've got to be able to separate, okay, what's important to me, what's not important to me, what's tactical, what's not tactical, is there enemies in the zone, uh, what's wrong with the patient, things like that. All in the span of, we were usually wheels up by eight minutes. Here's a really good one. Um, this is of uh, one of the PJs. And he, I found out, is a great, great grandson of Buffalo Bill. So um, this is a photo very similar to Buffalo Bill. I love this photo. This is a this is a, this is one of my favorite portraits, actually. Stationed at Moffett Airfield, California, Staff Sergeant Drew continues to serve in the California Air National Guard as an aerial gunner on HH-60 Pavehawk helicopters while attending the San Francisco Art Institute full time. He has received critical acclaim with a series of tintype photos from Afghanistan and is now being represented by the Robert Koch Gallery in San Francisco. Reporting for the Air Force Broadcasting Service, I'm Staff Sergeant Michael Brady.